No women, though, only men. They're the ones who have found a Russian wife online. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. But he was a depressive, Frankie Lyman. He, she was shooting drugs. He was a needle case. Died at twenty twenty one. Heroin overdose. What a great loss. I mean, he could have been president today, at least, or... Uh, Let's say mayor of Baltimore, something. He had a good, had a great career after the singing. Could have put on a suit, and they could have coached him. So, uh, how do you fight depression? Is God real? How do you know? What is romantic love? Is it real or self delusion? What is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret that you wish you could undo? Now, are these fair topics for talk radio when so many important, serious things are occurring, and we have so much to cover? Every day, like it's a classroom, a boring junior high school class in politics is not what I'm going to do. Now, they do say that it's better to have loved and lost than not to have loved at all. But I would say, almost sounding like the fool in Shakespeare, but, but the fool would say it's better to have loved and met Dr. Faust than not to have met Dr. Faust at all. Now, most people don't, don't know who Dr. Faust is, but that's quite a good quip for those of you who've ever read Shakespeare. Most people who've loved have met Dr. Faust. <laughs> that is pretty good. It is better to have loved and met Dr. Faust than not to have met Dr. Faust at all because you won't know good, or good and evil. Unless you meet Dr. Faust, how can you know evil? You know Dr. Faust? It's F-A-U-S-T, not Fawcett. This is the problem. There's so many people who are illiterate in America and don't speak the language. They don't know what I'm talking about. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. No, we all got along in those days. I don't know. There were no, it's not like knifings in those days, nothing. I carried a twenty two caliber Mossberg. I never ran through the halls and shot anyone. Today, I don't know. The kids kill each other with a paper clip. So here we are in the program. It's sort of like in one of my old wacky days. How do you fight depression? Is God real? What is romantic love? Is it self-delusion? What is the biggest mistake you ever made in your life? I, to me, it's more interesting than the politics. I look at the candidates for the Republican team, and I just had a laugh during a break. I was saying, you know, if I really wanted to do a scathing, funny segment, it would be, let's look at all the candidates on the Republican side and ask them which one of my advertisers' uh, products should they advertise. I mean, it's a given with... Uh, What's his name? Carson. He should do my pillow because that is the best pillow in the world. I mean, I'm the lightest sleeper on earth. Carson looks like he got a truckload of them and he uh, tests it out 24 hours a day. This guy looks like he's sleeping while he's talking. Now, I can't say the same for the other candidates because I don't know all my advertisers offhand. Definitely Donald Trump has to do Swiss America because he's definitely the gold standard. <laughs> but, you know, you go down the list. I mean, I don't have any ice cream advertisers, so Rubio's out. I would need an ice cream advertiser for Rubio. Cruz, I have no idea what product to associate him with. My blank.com, uh, mean. See, I told you he was, he was too, I can't explain it. I knew he wouldn't make it. I just knew it. Good ideas, smart man, like him. He'd make a better president than, than any Democrat. But, eh, likability factor, less than zero. He's not likable. It's just hard. There's something. I don't know. Weasley comes to mind. And I'm not saying he is. You see, the medium is the message. Looks say it all. You know what I'm saying? Just doesn't have it. That's all. Chemical exposure linked to rising diabetes and obesity. I put on 10 pounds last month. Let me see if this is the reason. Medical press. Emerging evidence ties endocrine disrupting chemical exposure to diabetes and obesity, according to uh, Endocrine Society. And now we go down the list to the chemicals. You've heard of them all. Bisphenol A, BPA, found in food can linings. Well, let's see. I don't eat canned food. Cash register receipts. Why, darn it, that's why I gained 10 pounds in the last month. Every time I check out at the supermarket, she says, do you want a receipt? And I'm one of those guys who say, yeah, I want it, and I touch it. I knew there was an explanation for why I put on all this weight. How do you like that? So I'll say no from now on. And I may immediately lose 10 pounds next month just by not touching my cash register receipt. Stupid morons. Propaganda. Good God. Plastics, cosmetics. In other words, everything we use is bad. If you lived around the campfire somewhere, 
like a Neolithic throwback, then the left would be happy. You'd finally be reduced to a perfect person. Published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology. I'm surprised they haven't tied it into global warming. Because every scientist today has to be a Lysenko, a mini Lysenko. And they have to prove that everything is related to global warming, including weight gain. Well, it's true, actually, when you think about it. If it was getting colder, you'd lose weight because you'd burn more calories shivering. But since it's getting warmer as a result of Al Gore and uh, global warming, you're gaining weight because your metabolism is slowing down. So I think there's a very pressing uh, issue on the earth. There's no question about it. WABC, Rob, which topic are you calling about? <laughs> What's your topic today, Rob? Topic is romance, and I think it ties well into almost all the topics that you brought up today. I think it is a self-delusion of grandeur. And I believe that because just like every filter we put up, um, love actually is not more, it's less. It's the joy of less. When we're in love, in deep romantic love, you focus on one thing, and it's a relief, because everything else around you peels away, and you can give it all to one person. Of course, you're, they call it head over heels for a reason, because you're off balance, and when reality strikes, very rarely does that kind of love go for a lifetime, uh, and then, you know, you're a mess. But... I think I, I, t I take it that you I've take it you've been through three three to four marriages. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I got married <laughs> late in life. I got married at fifty. I'm on. I actually have a two year old, a four year old, and a seven year old, and I'm fifty. Wait a minute. You're one of the old guys with a ponytail that I see in restaurants changing diapers on the table while I'm eating. No, I got all that stuff out of my system when I was single. I was an extreme guy and all that. I'm. I pretty much settled down and went into the uh, fatherly family mode. I'm. I'm like a, a dad and a granddad all at once, you know? You know, it's funny. I have another friend who became a father at 50. He's the happiest man I know because he's not facing any of the problems that most older men have in that he's totally wrapped up in being a father, and he loves it, loves it to death. Soccer, karate, vacation. I mean, loves the children, lives for them. That's exactly the two things I'm doing with my kids. I'm, I probably and the fact of the matter is children focus us in a way that people without children can never know, never. They do take us out of ourselves. And by the way, children can take you out of depression if you're strong enough uh, to fight your own ego and, and put children ahead of yourself. In fact, that's how God set it up, isn't it? Don't you think God set it up that we're supposed to live for our children rather than living for ourselves? Something in San Francisco has never learned? Yep, yep, I agree. And I think that... All right, well, you know, there, so wait a minute. You're how old now? 62? No, I'm 50 right now. I mean, when did you get married? Oh, I got married at uh, 41 years old, uh, 42 years old, and then, you know, right away, I didn't want to waste any time. I know I met the right woman. Well, well was, she, did she, was she a Russian bride online or a regular person? Oh, better than that. She was someone I was introduced to at a birthday party I didn't want to go to because I had a big breakup with someone, and I was very down. I mean, I love these guys. I hear stories through third parties of someone who's dating a Russian woman he met online, and he's happier than he's ever been in his life. I said, how long has it been? A month. I said, really? Tell me when a cousin's move in the house that he's still happy. Tell me when they find him bludgeoned to death and his bank account sacked that he's still happy. What, are you crazy? Yeah, no, no. This is, uh, I have, uh, it's an Albanian girl. She's from a real farm. I mean, talk about the... Wait, wait, wait. But you met her online, an Albanian online? No, no, no. I met her through a friend of ours who was uh, uh, taking care of some girls, and this girl was a nanny. And whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean by, ta well, hold it, taking care of some girls? Is this borderline, this conversation, or not? No, 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 no. I mean, like a, a nanny, you know, working. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, all right. Well, I've heard a lot of nanny stories that didn't work out too well for the wife or the husband. Well, this one seems to be working. Well, she was your nanny? No, no, she was someone else's nanny. Yeah, she was someone else's nanny, yeah. Are you a fan of The Sopranos? Did you ever watch that series when it was on? Uh, I've caught a couple episodes. I mean, I'm from an area in New did, Jersey. Did you see the episode with the Albanian uh, girl who goes to work for Artie's restaurant and w winds up working with the uh, mafia to steal his credit cards, and then she steal robs Ar Artie? Yeah, yeah, well, the Albanians get a bad rap from a couple movies that were out, but there are a lot I'm of... I'm saying they were, they were sure picked on by Tony Soprano. I wonder if it was an accidental death or a, a heart attack. No one really knows. Well, they... They say they took over a lot of the family business in the area, so you know they're pretty tough. So, but well, yeah. I know. and by the way, now a new series with this Ray Donovan. They're picking on Armenians all of a sudden. I never knew there was an Armenian mafia till I watched Ray Donovan. Leo, 
Do you watch? Do you watch Ray Donovan at all? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't. I all right. Thanks for the call. No, the latest one is Ray Donovan, uh, Armenian mafia. All of a sudden, Unbel I never heard of it. To me, I never met an Armenian either. They were nice people. One was a governor once. And a friend of mine from L.A. said, because he's from California, I wasn't originally, as you can tell, I wasn't born in Fresno. But the fact of the matter is, he said to me, anyone whose name ends in an IA and is Armenian, it generally turns out to be true. I so said, I never met an Armenian. He wasn't a nice person ever in my whole life. I don't know why they're picking on Armenians in, uh, in, in, uh, in Ray Donovan, Armenian Mafia. And the woman who's like the head of the Armenian Mafia family in that Ray Donovan in the catering hall, whoa, what a witch. What an actress she is till she gets the throat slashed by uh, by uh, the John Voight character. What a horrible scene that was. It was so horrible, I had to watch it again last night. I don't even know if it explains my mood today. I was like in one of those television moods. Something funny happened last night on the way to bed, and that was this. I'll tell you what happened. Well, I won't even bother you with the boredom. And I went to the best Chinese restaurant that I hadn't been to for years, and I went back, and I ate their sauce that I love because I wanted it for the throat. And it's so elevated because I was drinking a tea with vodka in it because I didn't want any cold beer. Uh, I would order the tea, and I have a little, bo you know, little bottles, airline bottles, because they don't sell it. And I would, you know, pour it into the tea. So I had six cups of tea with vodka. It doesn't uh, it doesn't add up to a lot of vodka, by the way, maybe two ounces, two bottles. But the food was so great, I couldn't sleep. So I watched two hours of World War One history, how the world came apart. And you see men in the trenches. You see 200,000 Canadians being killed in a week. That's 200,000 men, their, their husbands and their sons, butchered because of the psychotic old generals who, no matter what <clears throat> the men said, don't make us go into the machine guns of German lines, the generals would force them into the machine guns. Do you know that they shot 500 Allies troops? Excuse me, 500 French troops were shot by the French army because they wouldn't climb the ladders and go into machine gun fire? Do you know how the world has changed? Do you have any idea how lucky we are to be living in a time like this? I thought to myself as I sat watching in absolute horror. I couldn't believe men would live under such conditions, sleeping in mud. I couldn't believe my eyes. I had sympathy for the poor mules dragging the artillery and the men. I said, how could anyone live through that misery? Then I watched the last days of Hitler. That was a, that was a treat. It's always good to see the last days of Hitler, not the first days of Hitler. And the last days was quite, I mean, I've seen it before, but it's always good. The reason I like to watch World War II is I know who the good guys were, us. I know who the bad guys were, Hitler and the Germans. I know who wins, the good guys. I know who loses, the bad guys. So it's a story I like to watch over and over again. And of course, we knew who our president was. And although he was a devout socialist liberal FDR, he was definitely an American from an American family who had a real love for this country. A great time. Something so different uh, from today, isn't it? And he was a great war leader, by the way. Is, isn't that true? Now, many of you are calling about depression. And I've, I mean, it's 45 minutes after the hour. It's very interesting. We had a caller on love because it was one of, one of my questions. And some of you calling on depression. I have said before that each of us in talk radio attracts our own unique audience. And of course, then there's overflow. There are people who listen all day long in and out, Rush, Savage, others who are unknown completely uh, to, to the media, copycats, people who came along 20 years after me and copied everything I did and then put me down every day just as a part of their show. But we dismiss those people. They're called, uh, what, you know, wannabes. But you have overlap between all the audiences, and then you have single audiences that listen only to the individual. Some of you only listen to Rush Limbaugh. How is that possible if you're listening to me? Well, you're the overlap. Then there are people who listen only to me and listen to nobody else. They say, oh, this guy's the greatest. I only listen to him. I only... And I have a unique audience, and I'm pretty sure that most of you are depressives. And the, the reason, I mean, I'm saying, I'm not putting anyone down. There's no curse in being a depressive. I think people are agitated, they're perplexed, and they're somewhat miserable. And somehow in me, they sense a guy who can climb out of it and fly at a high altitude, and they wonder how I do it. Like, what is this guy, how does he do it? How is he able to do it despite all the horrors of the world? He sees it, I hear him. He has a greater analytical mind than anybody in the history of the media. And I agree with him because once he punctures through it, he's, he's right. But yet if he sees all of that, how does he do it? What keeps him going? What impels him? What's his secret? I mean, I think there's a little of that in it. And we'll continue our, uh, our little dialogue.